can't really light myself like a beauty YouTuber because, like, if I have the ring light pointing at me, my glasses are really bad. All so right. we are back, mm-hmm. everybody. Hello. And instead of transitioning scenes, I'm just going to add a Discord capture to Which is me. this scene. It's you. And we'll crop this a little bit because all these videos will look the same. We'll get rid of that. Oh, what is Oh, I'm watching an ad. That's what it is. That. Don't do that. What? Ads are terrible. Okay. <laughs> I'm subscribed. I shouldn't be watching an ad. All right. All right. Shall I hit go? Yes, you should. All right. For the third time where it will not crash everything, here is our castle theme. story about that for Doug <laughs> and about a year ago well hold on well, this, this first love that timpani bum, 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 it's so bum. good it's so insistent yeah also the tuba in this makes me really happy it's so round This part of the theme is important for Coin Song, in particular. This very stepwise, melodic motion. Okay, and since we've heard that already, that is our... uh, our theme there for Edgar and Sabin. Uh, do we want to do coin song before we do we want to just do those right next to each other? Uh, yes. Let me load FF six and boot it. And okay. I will tell you to hit go in just a minute. Sounds good. So I, I just think it's fun um, because we are a musicology s- stream. Uh, when I look at like the keys that things are in, uh, sometimes it's a crapshoot in these <laughs> because you're transcribing from nothing that's notated. But uh, that's in clear, very clearly in E major. Um, and if y'all think back to like Johann Matheson and uh, Charpentier and all these folks, we used to have very specific associations with the keys. And of course that's because the temperaments made all the keys yes. sound very different from each other. Um, but E major uh, in Charpentier's description is quarrelsome and boisterous, which I think is very fitting for the brothers. <laughs> nice. Go ahead. Is that that way, meme that's always circulated? Do shopping once more. Yeah. Like tag yourself. I'm obscure and sad mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. B flat minor is obscure and terrible. So mm. that's a good one. That is a good one. Uh, yeah. Charpentier has really good ones. Cause they're all just like two words. Some of them are like really long descriptions. Right. Dana, so go ahead and play different. coin song. I'm going to do that shopping. Okay. One this time. Here's coin song. So here is our kind of like sad flip of their theme. Flip. <laughs> yeah. It's a coin flip. change and a sad flute Oh, 
love that syncopated bass right there. Karen is in Maryland today. This is family. There's our loop. And that's our, there's our loop point. All right. So there you go. Bassoon dude, I, I'm i flabbergasted by that story. Fully played the Quinn song for a composition project. Oh my gosh. Lenny, did you miss the story when Cyan came up? How I... <laughs> I had the exact same thing happen to me where I entered a, um, uh, like a composition contest and it was middle school through high school. And my crappy little like minor keyed derivative of Moonlight Sonata thing that I came up with. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like a copy. I did legitimately write it myself, but it made it to like the, the next level, like the regional or whatever. And at the <laughs> awards ceremony, the high schooler that was like going on to the state level with his composition submitted Cyan as his own song. And I was like sitting there going like, wait, what is this? And it like, it was like way later that I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. he submitted science and i've been carrying that around with me it's like like what would i have done about it but <laughs> oh my god so, like i hope somebody caught him this is was one like of late a 90s. couple really good cinematography moments in super nintendo gameplay that kind of just pushed the whole medium forward and it's mm -hmm. sabin is sitting here and the camera does not cut we pan down and we are in the past I don't see you in Discord. Yeah, I don't oh, see you in Discord either. Man. Okay, hold on. I know. It's okay. Sorry to be... No, it's good. There you go. Providing Discord. Mm. Thank you. The electric yes. piano sounds really similar. It does. Yeah. Wow. And now, actually, I never have to switch in and out of Discord. We can just... Yeah, it's more convenient this way. Okay. Right. All right, my crackling wick candles getting so loud. Let's see what we have here. <gasps> mm. That's lovely, actually. It is. The balance with the strings is nice. Are you Nobuo Uematsu? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Owned. I really like this. Yeah. Yeah, this is very too. good. The flute's lovely. Yeah. And uh, do we I'm loop right here too, or do we extend? I think we loop here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting to see which one's got that little extra something something. <laughs> I'm this one, really happy that they simple. I don't think but it needs simple. the expansion. Yeah, it's it, it's got everything it needs. Plus oh, more... look at the sky! It's like pretty galaxy. So pretty. Yes, and the reason we're doing this cutscene today actually is not just a matter of convenience; it's because it's tied into the opera, as well. So mm -hmm. uh, we will get there. No one to take the throne. How did he not like lose that off the tower? Can you imagine? Like, crap! I, mean, I gotta go dig in the sand you'd, now. You'd go get it, right? Like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> By digging around in the desert, <laughs> hoping that you saw it. Three hours later, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a coin in a sand stack. <laughs> Good use of silence here. They're just kind of looking at each other. Ugh. There's, There's so much emotion in such simple about, pixels. Like, people just sitting. Here's to a couple of confused grown ups. Drink. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Clink. Optional desert digging minigame. There you go. 
to mom. Oh, to Figaro. So sweet. And then we get the night night theme. Yes. It's so beautifully done. I mean, it's just like right. pure good storytelling. Well, and then and then we're right back to hello grandeur. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm really good at this game of when it's not crashing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so now we get the ability to submerge, and you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> there is an optional sequence in Colin Gen that we no longer have time to do today. Sorry, I don't think we were planning on doing it this week anyway. Uh, but Locke and Rachel, uh, you can meet right, them yeah. this week. Hey, we yeah. can do that later. We'll do that later. Yeah. We already got one of our paired themes here, so we can do another one another time. Yeah, Because we can kind of do that whenever, skip. right? Uh, we can do it after Vector. There you go. Which will be the plan. Oop, not that one. This one. Da 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 da. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like shockingly jaunty. Uh, it's one of those things that just like the more I hear it, the crazier it makes me. Boom, da da da. David is an Aura confirmed. Oh, Locke doesn't have anything equipped. We should fix that. <laughs> well, might help. Yeah, maybe. But for that battle, you were locked in what you had. Hey -o. Hey -o. Lock his birthday suit. <laughs> Best <laughs> enemy in the game. Oh wow. Weirdly, when the second flute comes in, the articulation isn't quite so bad. It's when it's solo, I, I just... Agreed. It just, yeah, the second one covers the empty space a bit. Yep. But I, I still wonder if they had chosen a more legato articulation, what that would have, what that would have done for it. It's a very Pied Piper feel, yes. To the yeah. grunge mariachi trumpet feels attached. <laughs> yeah. It just it it pops out of everything else in a in a way that it doesn't in the original. Yeah. Just like the the neon green pops out on the map. Hmm. I don't mind the strings here, but yeah, there's, this theme is very, the Terra theme is very heavy handed, I think. And they've certainly surprised us, you know, tracks that we were less attached to in the original, they managed to make us really, really interested in, like the Mount Colts theme. Yeah, mm. I think that's going to happen to us with Zozo, actually, is my prediction. I'm be I am excited Zozo. to hear that. Yeah. Oh, I better pull up... Um... Pull up the magic house, please. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'm taking these fights instead of running, by the way, because I want to gain one level before we have to fight the Zozo boss fine. that we wouldn't gain if I ran all the time. It doesn't take that much more time. You just got to Use your owl rock cannon. It'll be fine. All right. All right. Yeah, so we get the normal town theme in Jador, which I love. It's a very Final Fantasy IV take on the town theme. It is. Yeah, it's very, like, Celtic Moon Final yeah. Fantasy VI, you know? Exactly. That's what we keep calling it, Celtic Moon yeah. Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Quintessential town theme. Got all the all the markers of town theme. Yeah, they did a beautiful job with this one. And it's here, interesting because the flutes oh, just ahead, great. Sorry. All the articulations, all the little turns, all these ornaments are perfect. Yeah. I was gonna say it's interesting because six doesn't usually lean into the more sort of high fantasy Celtic moon vibe. Right? It usually right. no, like sticks. All. Because of the, steam the, steam the steampunky exactly. background, I think they kind of avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny to hear that take on this. It's a little uh, jarring. 
Okay, oh, so right. even though I think a lot of us associate Magic House with kind of the the Dark World version because it becomes the entire town's theme at that point, um, I, we wanted to play it here because it's a really interesting thematic pairing with Zozo, um, and we'll talk about why here. But let me, am yeah. I sharing? You are, okay. You're up on the stream. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. So here's Magic House, which is one of my favorite tracks. As a kid, I like recorded this onto a cassette and used to listen to it all the time. So I love it. We would have been good friends. I <laughs> was very happy to, to transcribe it. And I notated the, uh, the little turns, not as like ornaments but as actual written out notes that like extreme retardando i love that wow i've spent so little time thinking about this song i'm really excited to hear you guys talk about it Sigma we get this right. back this song is a final fantasy 2 shit post it was originally written for final fantasy 2 and discarded and uh, you can track down the chiptune version of it if you would like. Cool. We'll do, we will do that when we get back to it in World of Ruin for today. Because I want to emphasize the... the comparison to Zozo. Before. Yeah, the uh, c the combo of the acoustic guitar and the flute on the on the answer. I love this. And then harps harpsichord. Or yeah, I guess I guess I notated that as harpsichord throughout our little B section here. This piece could have looped right there. Like, I love yeah, that it just easily. continues to go. So yeah, this is very, you know, this is meant to kind of imply high class uh, through kind of all these baroque -ish gestures. <laughs> uh, just the sheer amount of ornamentation, the little flute turns. Yep. And the one use of harpsichord in the whole soundtrack, basically. Mm -hmm. And that very, like, Baroque-ish, uh, again, burialage is not the right term, because it's not the right type That's of what I always instrument. call it, though. But, yeah. So, yeah, I always call that burialage, so just so we know what I'm talking, what we're talking about here in the harpsichord, um, yeah. where it, it's alternating you with alternate, the... but one note is a pedal, right? Yeah, but one note is the pedal tone. Uh, on a string instrument, it's usually to an open string, and we call that burialage, and years ago when I was working on some of this music, I was like posting sh screenshots like this going, wait, what would you all call this? And nobody ever came up with like another good term for it. And I, I so I would call it like quasi burialage in, I think even in my dissertation, yeah. I did that uh, to describe this texture, but it shows up a lot. It does. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, very common in keyboard. It's very common in string instruments, but it shows up in other places too. Let's so, like look, I'm going to enter the house cousin now. of an Alberti bass, but not really. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah, it doesn't play. Oh, I didn't think it, it played this play here. Okay, so we're cheating. It, it doesn't plays... play until the Dark World, so we're cheating. <laughs> Good song, though. Okay, we'll fine. listen to it again when it comes up, but I did want to play it because uh, I have some thoughts Do you want to hear the Pixel Remastered about... version right now or no? Um, No. Let's okay. save it. Let me Perfect. pull up Zozo, though, which is Slam Shuffle. Yes. So before we go in there... I did want to play these two as a, as a theme, even though I was pretty sure it didn't play in Jador yet. Okay. I had it in my head, well, maybe in Alzer's house, but yeah, not even there. Yeah, it's baroque but it's got all these, like, romantic gestures, like that, that extreme rubato where we do the big retardando at the end of every single phrase. It's, like, a little ponderous <laughs> to be Baroque. <laughs> but we have the instrumentation, we have the ornamentation, we, you know... We have some elements that are kind of hinting it's an instrumental at the Baroque setting of a Handel vocal solo. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much so. And that is all because the, we are implying upper crust, right? Okay, before you go in there. Yeah. It's very, yeah, like, self-consciously to... classical music, you know? Yeah. Yes. Like, very much so. And that's... Uh, to really like hammer in the distinction um although it's interesting you just get the regular town theme the first time around this is the first time you get a town that is very right. different in appearance and of course it is an unsafe town you get attacked in in the town go ahead so, and play dana here is slam shuffle 
This is Zozo's theme. And you will see, based on how I tag some of these things, I describe this as like a harpsichord that's seen some things. <laughs> also notice rain sound effects, curmudgeonly electric bass, wibbly wobbly. I didn't know what to call that instrument. It is wibbly wobbly. Like a drum set that looks like one stomp would use. <laughs> This is like an electric harpsichord because it doesn't feel like an electric guitar. Right. 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 And it's got some, if you isolate the channel, it's got like some grit to it. Uh, On top of obviously there's the rain sound effect, which is the white noise in those two channels. But even just the isolated uh, upper channels still sound gritty. So the, the most obvious upgrade is to improve the quality of the rain sound. I love that little descent there. <laughs> also, can we talk about the the low murner murner murner? <laughs> All right, let's Start see. Let's see what it is. I'm excited. I've not had this one spoiled for me, so I'm excited. I am as well. I've saved. I'm still streaming. We're good. Okay, here we go. Oh snap! Ooh. Okay, guitar. I'm just going to let this play for a minute. Interesting. I really like this. It's cool, but I think it ruins the connection to the Magic House theme that I was hearing. Because when I described it as like a harpsichord that's seen some things, my idea was that it's like the the dark mirror. You know, right, it's like right. the other the other side of Jador, um, the slums where you know so, things are gritty. Hot take on this that I'm sure the stream is going to chew me what's alive this for. This feels more like an Earthbound song to me. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that I disagree in this arrangement. That's what Magic I mean. Yeah, this particular range. Yeah. It's, uh, it feels, it's a little thin. It doesn't have, like, the, the kick that you're... I like the electric guitar in the very beginning and then the rest. I think, like, the lead... What even is that? It sounds like a weird harmonica that kind of thinned out. Mm-hmm. Well, remember that when the battle resumes, we will... Uh, we'll resume we should we pick off. up. So yeah. here we go. Feels too clean. I hate the it. I hate that okay, over. that's cool. The dripping's cool. <laughs> oh, this is new. Yeah, it is. Oh, notice you only the hear rain the rain. Stopped. You only hear the rain when you're outdoors. Very cool. I don't know that I like the saxophone here though. Oh, it, I do I, like it actually. I guess it makes sense. It's giving you that like CD vibe. I was gonna say saxophones are sleazy. Right? And yeah. yeah. That's kind of what we're going for here. Right. But yeah, this totally wrecks my connection between Magic House and this, though. Uh, which I thought was an elegant little thesis. So. <laughs> so, you know. I don't love the pizzicato here. It's too precious. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to start running through this so we can make it to the opera, because it is the next thing, but we do have to get through this. It is not to me to decide whether you are a perfect gentleman, but saxophones are in fact sleazy. He's not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong, Ryan. There's plenty of times when they aren't, but they, they also are. <laughs> if you need an instrument with which to express sleaze, I mean, like, what else are you going to use? Hmm. Yeah, what else? What? What's a sleazy instrument? What's another sleazy instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Who hurt you, Ryan? I've heard vibraphones are sleazy. <laughs> yeah, I hear a vibraphone and I'm like, oh boy. Oh boy. 
This that is, this that is person a, clearly uh, doesn't have any money. The person who owns a vibraphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to porn research. Sometimes electric bass can get pretty sleazy. Electric so. bass, e bass, sleazy. I'm on board for that. E bass can get. Sle I, I think. I think, I think uh, like electric piano too can have some sleaze. Yeah. Because it's like yeah. it's like the idea of like the instruments are so cheap. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the drip drop at the turn ruins the take as a TikTok. And the relentless mm -hmm. time of clocking it. Oh, yeah. But it works for the rain. It works for the idea of the rain dripping. Or, like, the dripping faucet that never gets fixed because... Right. Because the landlords of the landlord looking to door. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the Veil Dancer being able to do that. Yeah, I just got eaten by. Oh. Fuck. Bye. Ooh. Oh, this is the first time we've heard this. <laughs> yeah, I'm really pumped about that. Oh, but you know what? It's FF uh, Pixel Remaster. We just start at the room. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine. Trumpet with growl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What about, like, those drums that are, like, a set of four and you, like, wear it on your body? That's marching band quads. Choreography. Yep. Yeah, those are sleazy. Yep, Sigma Beta just got you on that. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought a lot about Zozo because I've always liked this track um, and as I was transcribing it I was really feeling the connection to Magic House because I had done that one first hmm. so like maybe I just have some I don't totally dislike this arrangement but like it, it does destroy some of the, the symmetry that I thought it had I don't have, I think this arrangement, it, it, works. Right, it does not accomplish what you wanted it to accomplish, but it's but it not, doesn't not work. bad, right. Yeah. I don't hate it. I, did, I think yeah, it does there, 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 are pause, there are tracks I have not liked, but That you're going to have works. to fight here. You hear this and you don't think, I'm safe right now. And that's the key message it has to convey. Well, and it was interesting, so the, putting it as harpsichord that's seen some things, that was partially um, through discussion with stream team chat. I was sending them, uh, you know, isolated channels being like, how would you describe this instrument? You know, sometimes I just make silly, like I the stomp uh, reference and stuff. I'll make silly combinations of things. But that one, I was like, I've always heard this as a little harpsichordy, but not quite. Um, and folks kind of liked the harpsichord that seen some things. Because, like, I, I didn't quite hear it the same way that I hear other guitars represented in the soundtrack specifically. Like, Tamberly, it feels a little bit different. Yeah, the clocking in of the working class room, indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the pink light coming through the window. Notice it's not a red light, it's a pink light. Ooh, Lauren the Flute's Yay, here. Lauren, the, Lauren flute the Flute! Hi, Lauren! Lauren the Flute, you just missed the most beautiful coin song flute. We were all oh, like, so where's Lauren? <laughs> You've gotten that far, though, haven't you? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. But... And I'm also excited to listen to your flute fire arrangement of that very song. Oh, I know. I just saw that post. Oh, yeah. And I was Man, like, this is I perfect. It. It we just so hit good. it. Yeah. So, oh, we were just we wrapping that discussion, about so <laughs> Lauren. We think it's pretty good, except... Well, hold on, Savin's gonna wreck this thing, right? Yes, good. Except, it doesn't accomplish all of the same goals, or it doesn't signify all the same things that the original piece did. So, like, Dana heard harpsichord in the Super Nintendo version as kind of like a counterpoint to the richness and wealth of Owser's house, and that's gone now. It was like a dirtied up harpsichord, or as I transcribed it, harpsichord that's seen some things. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I, I liked... We actually listen to both of them together, even though we don't get Magic House till later in the game, um, because I see it as, you know, this is meant to be the kind of CD underbelly, where we've kind of segregated the, the, the poor folks and the thieves away from the rich people. Um, and so I like having those, those town themes kind of like paired in an interesting way. Um, so I don't, I don't dislike this as a standalone track, but like in context, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I like it, and I, I kind of dig the saxophone. I know people. I was gonna say it. I like the saxophone a lot. Yeah. 
we'll see. In like, this context, I when we it. had like late night club saxophone on the Narsha track, I was like, what is this doing here? <laughs> I here really like the dynamic audio because that was not there in the Super Nintendo version. The rain turning on and off. Mm -hmm. That's a really smart addition. And I think I need to bring it up with my wise students, actually. Like, look, you can do this with old stuff. I'm surprised it's not just dulled. You would think, like, you can still hear rain when you're inside. It's possible. Why is uh, it a hill, guy? Guess? Zelda 3 does that. Zelda 3 will dull music and rain right. sounds if you go indoors. Right. Yeah, it's definitely going for the grunge here. Wasn't he a Hades, I guess, in the... Yes, in he Nintendo? was in the original. Wrong with Hades. Pink lights are alluding to Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Da, 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 I definitely da, da. hear yeah, some Pink Panther. You could layer it. Yeah. Okay. See, I I see the pink lights as uh like a subtle like red light district but we're not gonna go all the way to red light district because yeah. this is this game <laughs> but that's kind of what i get from the pink lights so th this was actually a point of contention but yeah i i described it if i listened to those the spc channels in isolation i got kind of like it's not quite a guitar to my ears compared to the other guitar in the soundtrack, so I, I, I thought of it as like a dirtied up harpsichord. Like it's got a little bit of like noise to it. Yeah, in addition to being the boss of 07, which is correct, uh, Dottaluma is also just this person who hates everybody and likes fighting. Here's my question. Is he floating or is he balancing on his toe at the bottom there? He's lying he's on the floating. ground in a puddle. He really likes water. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting on one knee, balancing his other leg up out of the puddle, and making shadow puppets with his hands. Yes. Oh. Edgar. He's levitating on a single toe. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I... I think he's I... floating. Yeah. You know what? We don't need to revive that. Whatever. He's, he's like a ballerina. Who somehow manages to counterbalance, <laughs> to death, right? even though yeah, that position makes no sense. <laughs> that electric guitar scream right there that's added, that track is so good. Except for the except for the Lindsey Sterling violin. No, Other than that, everything is great. good. You gotta get over your Lindsey Sterling thing. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> never, never do I have to do that. Not a fan. Ugh. Ooh, Hermes sandals, damn. Right? All right, here that, we go. That was their model, I guess. Okay. <gasps> Ooh, look at that angry face. Do you see that eyebrow? Yes. <gasps> Wait, did they... Oh, like, I love it. ...take out the parade of people filing in and out of this room? Or is that something I made up? That I think you made that up. later. Or is that... That's later. Yeah. Is that later? Okay. Here we get our easy listening awakening because somebody's waking up in a bed. Thematic. Shock me yeah, daddy. The eyebrow, these eyebrows have some sass to them. Yeah. I need to like how do I snip? Snip tool. New. No. Can I Yes. I just snipped her so that I can I don't know. Poor baby. Zoom in and just like put this on Twitter and be like pissed off Esper Terra energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, we get a new track here. Sorry, Dana. I know you now this is a... Yeah, I did. Well, my question is, do we want to do we want to just do it now since it's now come up twice? <laughs> Save it for the Cave of Sealed S the Sealed Cave. Okay. So that okay. we have upper okay. time. We're slowly I've had it for time. Yeah, I've had it for a long time, but we can wait to talk about it. Cuz I want to do the opera, the aria itself in two languages. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's what other language do you want to do with it? Any is the correct answer. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd be interested in either Japanese or Italian primarily, I think. I was, was going to say, either. Context in which it exists. 
I would be. I would love to hear the Italian. Actually, I'm curious. Oh, Laura, Lauren was telling us the French one's really good, though. Right. Look, if y'all yeah. want to stay late and listen to every language, I'm just going to do that. I, when we I would also. Anyway. I would also be yeah. okay with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> We can, we can do some comparative I'm planning on kind of like something. YouTubing the non-English ones so that we don't have to sit through 20 minutes every time. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, opera, you gotta do it in Italian. Yeah. I, I recently, over spring break, uh, got number one in the Diamond League in Duolingo Italian. I never thought I was gonna Puzzle. do that. Because most of the time, the people that reach number one in Diamond League, like, subscribe. And it's 15 bucks a month. Like, who has the money to spend that on Duolingo? Not me. (laughs) That's like a streaming service, at least. Yeah, all of Netflix or Duolingo. Yeah. Uh, My German doesn't need to be that good, team. Right, exactly. So I just, I I was shocked. I must have just gotten seated with, like, a bunch of other people who don't pay for Duolingo. And like I did kind of go hard because it was spring break because I, I saw Ooh, I had a look chance at, the at getting smoke one. Effects here at the end of the cave to the sealed gate. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's very cool. Wow, it's so a moody. Too. Yeah, it looks like a Sega Saturn title in that spot. <laughs> the pizzicato on the third play of this. This is great. Is very good. That's the- Because it's paired with the harp so perfectly. And pizzicato strings get used a lot. Oh, I love how that just trails off. It like doesn't finish. Right. And then, and then it, it just loops. Loops there. Yep. Ooh, it's like a little comment. Yeah, pizzicato is often used um, in like magical contexts. Think like Sorcerer's Apprentice. Mm. So I think it fits here. Pizzicato can get like cheesy, oh. you know, it can get. Oh. This line is that one is of the painful. best changes that Tom Slattery made to the whole script. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. What was it in the original? Do you remember? I don't. I have to pull out the script. Yeah. I don't remember. I feel like it was something about like trying to figure out what she is. Um, easy enough to look up. And then we learn what magicite is, and it's super depressing. Oh, I'm going to even glow think, with, like, the life force. I think the magicite as a concept is a fascinating replacement for the elemental crystals. And, of course, they are the mm-hmm. stand-in, right? They're the new crystals. It's, like, so much darker, about. though. Yeah. It is, yes. thought that I would be able to find this easier. Oh, oh well. I can't. I can't it also it makes it like an unspeakable tragedy every time you get stronger for the rest of the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I always felt like the, the factory, you know, where they're kind of like, we are giving you our power. Um, and a lot of the other espers kind of follow suit where they're like, better you than Kefka and everybody. <laughs> like, that right. that makes you feel like not so awful about it. All right, the two characters, by the way, are here. We will send them back. We don't need them. Edgar, <laughs> shut up, Cyan. <laughs> right. 
I love that Gao is like pretty happy about being able to just jump down the side of the building. It's very much in character for him. Mm-hmm. Ooh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> His name slapped. I was very happy with that one. Well, not Ooh, his. I was going to say, the Velt theme slapped. His theme was good, too, though. What kind of wine is it? $13 wine from the store. That's the kind, the best Heck kind. Hell yeah. yeah. It's my favorite place to get wine, the store. <laughs> we are playing Winal Fantasy. I've made that joke cool. before. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You want fresh jokes? Go find a comedian. <laughs> You want good transcriptions? Come here. <laughs> we actually have the a walk very and nice, talks uh, in this game. Wine and liquor store in town, and we. Went I, there and I we went to our nice one today because that's who we are. Oh well, hey, honestly, there I follow a wine podcast called Wine for Normal People, and she often advocates for stuff in that price range. So it just depends. We did see there was a very nice looking bottle of one hundred fifty dollar tequila, and we thought we're too old for that. Joe really likes not not that expensive, but Joe Joe likes you know not terrible mixing tier tequila. He he gets stuff that's like nicer, but not you know we're talking like forty dollars, not like hundred. This was like it comes in a handmade ceramic jar. A lot like, of you're paying for a lot of that. Tequila. Yeah, yes, yeah, you're paying for the spectacle surrounding it. Really, what you need what you need in tequila is you know 100% agave the ability to get drunk and, very quickly that's what tequila oh, does for you. if you want one that's not just paint thinner and you know actually tastes like a thing there are there are some nice ones Joe has some really nice ones yeah we Joe actually stocked up on some nice things uh, he got he rebought the bottle of my favorite scotch that he discovered which is uh, Belveni's Caribbean cask they finish the scotch in rum barrels so it takes on rum characteristics and it's got like this like almost fruitiness with the smokiness of the scotch and it's unbelievable oh wait a minute hold on how do and I see I, uh, that as I always tell people um, and most people will tell me this isn't a thing uh, I get really existential on tequila so I have to be careful <laughs> but Joe, Joe will be like, "Why does alcohol doesn't affect you differently?" Like, stop saying that only the one does that. It, it, I'm like, I don't know. Every time I've like had a little too much tequila, I get real existential. So, look, association is a powerful thing. If you get existential every time you have tequila, it's gonna remind you of that other time you uh-huh. got existential. Uh huh. Yeah, most people, it's okay. like okay. Coyote Ugly, like <laughs> dancing on the bar drink, and I'm like, nope. I just picture really good. There was a there was a place uh, on the east side of Cleveland so, from fun Cleveland fact Institute of Music where they had like really good margaritas. Tequila. That's simply because you do not have a story about tequila. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was gonna actually be a fact. Okay, but Sigma, when I saw you pounding tequila, you were also drinking another type of alcohol, which I think confounded the issue. So mm-hmm. more data is required. Mm. That makes a difference. Ooh, I know what I need to queue up next, and I'm excited because it is the spinach drag. Ooh, we have we... some of the fun poppy songs this week. Are we doing Setzer's theme or no? Oh, we can. That's but actually I... next right here. Yeah, we'll do that. We can always play it again when we do uh, Epitaph. Yeah, let me but mute yeah. here before I talk to the dude. Bring... <laughs> oh, you have to share again, actually, on Discord. Yeah, apparently. Apparently. I think I closed it. All right, so here's Setzer. Once Hold on one second. Say go. I will in a minute. I need to find where I put it, because I'm awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there Spinach Rags, one, one of my all-time favorites. All right, so here's Setzer. I love Setzer's theme. <laughs> In many ways, this theme feels like the airship theme. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that well, it big plays on the airship. leap up and that slow walk down, a la Sean Atkinson's paper. Mm-hmm. And 
right there, that chromatic thing, I always hear, I will spend my lifetime loving you from Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get these little That's swoopy slightly violin less things too. Uh, but I can't not hear it every time. But this type of climb back up to Tonic is absolutely airship material. This dude flies. This dude flies. I just want to hear one more, uh, one more violin swoop here, since we're talking airships, like right here. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's what airships sound like. They just do that. Sound. And then we get another one at the end of this line. Yeah. Uh, as I click through dialogue here, I'm gonna turn off our sheet music source. So honestly, that's like one of the more heroic themes in the whole thing. Um, and maybe because it's doing double duty as being light world airship, um, but well, also but kind of representing... has its own theme, and it is less airshipy. Yeah, but that one still plays when you're in... When you're Blackjack. amidships, it plays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think of it as being still very much connected to the ship. That's fair. The, yeah, you're right that the flying has it, which I, I didn't actually transcribe... Uh, either airship theme. I can if people want it. Uh, uh, it the wasn't, Falcons wasn't anything searching I felt for like I friends. Oh yeah, is, I do have searching for yeah. friends. I think. And I agree. Three. Dark Sword, are you talking about the prey oh, version of the town lullaby? Because that thing is oh, it's so breathtakingly beautiful. excellent. All right, here is our Setzer theme. Oh, he's director of the troop. E. That performs at the Opera House. That's a new word. The troop? Also, I don't think of Opera Houses as having troops. I think of theater so, troops. Am opera Houses in Germany have ensembles, like a, a fixed company. Right. Um, in the they, States they would, and elsewhere, that's not as common. Does anybody else call them troops, though? Like, I feel like that terminology is a little weird. Not really, but nobody ever really says theater troops either these that's days. True. Yeah. That's it's true. More, it's more of like, It's you know, a very yeah. period British thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Ensemble, though, like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or, like, you know, talking about, like, a chorus. Um, like I, that. I mean, in German, you would literally call it the, the fixed farm, ensemble. Son? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What a Stardew dick. Valley, y'all. Realistic. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. So grand. Ooh, look at his hair. He's dapper. He's very dapper. Gambling vagabond. Mm. <laughs> Finds freedom from society's narrow views of morality. Like, whoa! Setzer, Setzer can, however, get it. Setzer's hot. I was gonna say, <laughs> Set, narrow view we're gonna of say, morality sounds like he's sleeping with a lot of people. Right? Like, Setzer fucks, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> what are you saying about people who sleep with a lot of people? That they are transcending society's narrow views of morality. <laughs> Honestly, fair. <laughs> Let's not slot shame him. Very good save, Ryan. I like it. <laughs> I agree the game brass uh, could do this now. This is excellent. Yeah, that would be amazing. Okay. Set up a meeting with this LaCroix. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, as a kid, I, I, I have mispronounced it as Seltzer before. Seltzer? So I hear oh. it. Yeah. His new name's LaCroix. You should have named him LaCroix. Slot shaming is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if uh... I said it, but then I decided to type it too, just so it landed. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna slot shame him for his loose grip of morals. Can we shame that terrible ability though? Because it is not good. No, yeah, it's it is incredible good. as long as you cheat. Oh, well, okay. Start of round. As long as, as, long as you free yourself from the game's narrow views of morality. It's yeah, there you go. Thing. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> So if, in the Super Nintendo version, and I am sh almost certain they will have fixed this bug in this edition. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Super Nintendo version, if you use an echo screen at the start of the fight and then use the slots, you can get anything legitimately as long as you're fast on the buttons. They unlock the reels. At that point, slot is a very good ability. But it made Setzer's building instead. Oh, chip teeth. I haven't done the chocobo theme either. That's that's another one that no, no one has asked for. I want to hear Techno Chocobo. We have not had it yet. So I'm just going to ride over Yeah. It. Yeah. 
I don't have it, but we'll listen. What? I see. What the, what the fuck? What the? I hate this. <laughs> Also, I agree with Sigma Beta, the travel, like, the world map feels shitty. I'm gonna let it keep going. Uh... Um... Can we... Can we never listen to this again, Ryan? The chiptune reference was all right. This sounds like they're like trying to be that piece from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> oh yeah! Right. I feel wow, so wow. uncomfortable right now. <laughs> this is that what people who are ignorant us. of video game music think video game music sounds like. This is honestly this is a mashup with 70s, Oh Yeah would improve this. This is 70s porn soundtrack of video game music. Absolutely, I think it yes. sounds very like Nickelodeon kids show with all of the like toy percussion and like the weird synth sound. This is this is a six year old playing on their MIDI keyboard like with all the weird sounds they can find. I think there's a paper in the idea that one person can hear seventies porn and another person can hear Nickelodeon nineties child, hmm. and nobody disagrees with either take. There, there's a paper yeah. in there somewhere. <laughs> there's a paper in that. I, uh, I, I would probably be a person dude. to write that paper, wouldn't I? Damn it! <laughs> it's, Jarell it's says, I can't you believe I muted Praetorium's audio for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but here, we're gonna we're gonna have a nice moment here, because okay, we're okay, gonna okay, get okay, spinach okay. rag, which is, like, so good. It's so good. Oh, yeah, let me uh, so stop FF6 audio and put Discord Also, up. you'll like the background I picked for it. <laughs> for spinach rag. Yeah. <laughs> is it spinach? Oh, no, okay. Yeah, let's it's go. Better. It's not spinach. It is the, like, you're on stage. Uh, so, yeah, the fun thing about this one before it starts is that uh, the top four and the bottom four channels are uh, the exact same. They are just slightly detuned, so it makes it sound like a honky-tonk piano. You're welcome. It's fun. <laughs> yep, let's do it. Detuned piano is a fantastic instrument, by the way. I love this theme so much. Yes, excellent. It's just, it's perfect. You get your little stridey piano. Even though it's all very treble. We really don't have a lot of bass stride going on. But we still get the right oompa motion. This is our B section. Kind of a little C section. We would normally get a re return of the A between like each new thing, right? Right. I would absolutely but... watch Dolores shoot people to this music, Lenny. A plus <laughs> reference. Yes. Westworld. This would work in Westworld. So yeah, we do sacrifice um, a repeat of the A section that we would normally get in a classical rag, and a rag generally would have at least an, uh, one more um, contrasting section, but like what uh, probably based on space limitations it's perfect <laughs> yeah and and the way we get that like I, I don't know if like he just couldn't find a good enough honky tonk sample that he decided to just take two piano samples and slightly detune them but it's brilliant when i uncovered that i was like holy shit here we go well this one's not as detuned uh, uh, but it sounds more honky tonk piano yeah it's because the piano player here can, like, play... Articulate it. Yeah. Yeah, I think... it sounds like a silent film score. Yeah, it does. It's very legato. Kind of brings out the melody a little bit, but it's a little... A little heavy. <laughs> The hand to the forehead. Mm -hmm. Was that a little like record scratch there? 
Yeah. It was, yeah. and it was the slightest tempo hesitation as well. Yeah, that too. Cute. This really gives me, like, silent film vibes. It's so good. This is excellent. Which is so I funny for the opera house. So like, happy right now. Having the ragtime so as, like, Dana the lobby of the opera house is always any a little, of the opera stuff silly. yet. Has yeah. Annie, have you? I have heard the English version one time. Okay. I wanted to prep for this day. It is very clean. Uh, we do have the like the right piano <laughs> in use. Some of the articulations, I think, are a little interesting. I think that uh, Scott in the chat is right. That yeah. it could be a lot more ragtime. <laughs> it's. I mean, it sounds a lot like the original, though. Oh, yeah, I love when she's like singing to herself like i can't do this and then goes immediately to go warm up it's like okay Celis, this right. is your her, obviously her favorite. Secret dream what i like about using the ragtime as background for the opera house is that like it kind of plays into the chaotic nature of putting a show on you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah yeah like <laughs> like it gives you the real sense of like you know on stage is one thing but backstage it's a complete shit show and that's realistic Oh, we're going right in. Yep. Sorry. I guess we'll ha we'll have to watch videos later. <laughs> I like that there is a seated audience now. That's baller. Wow. Yeah, they, they all look <laughs> People came yeah. this time. The house is sold out <laughs> this time. Yeah. They didn't sell the balcony though. I actually like the kind of more staccato articulations there, by the way. No! God damn it. So, the impresario <laughs> should not be on the stage right now. I hate, hate No, that he walked the, out the there. The impresario comes out to tell you, I'm so sorry, Maria is sick today. The role of Maria, played by Maria, will actually be played by... Formal, former general fellowship. Yeah, that's not... No, but here's the thing. In the original, he didn't walk out on the stage. You can see him walking off the stage here, which sucks. Because it works mm. against my argument, which is that his appearance there is the audience reading the program notes written by him, mm -hmm. introducing mm -hmm. the show. Okay, I thought it was just super titles. Ooh, here we go. Okay. I'm buckling up, y'all. God, I can, like, that feel said, the I, texture of those I do of like Draco walking rocks. on from stage right. That is excellent. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh, oh this is weird. Maria. Oh, boy. The tone is not consistent. As if I were by your side. I want him to sound just, more, more operatic like than a, this. He sounds like an undergrad is all. He just yeah. Does, yeah. 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 I want him to sound but like it's a not lot. A he just sounds like an undergrad. I just want him to have more, like, I want him, I want the, the contrast between him and Maria to be a lot stronger. Like, these are the professional people that are, were already in the opera. Well, and, and then I'm going to let this loop for a minute. One of the things I like about this opera performance is that the bass is the hero, which is pretty rare, right? Tenors mm -hmm. always get the yeah. girl. And Ooh, I wanted I Draco to be a bass. And he's not here, right? He clearly <laughs> yeah. cannot go four notes lower than what he just sang. I like this. That's my favorite line. They've been by singing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, somebody doesn't get opera. Aren't you the king? Haven't you been to this stuff before? So, I really like 
the track we're hearing right now. Yeah, I, I, I like, I'm liking this part. Yes, and I, I agree with Madison that I want Draco to, like, have those notes. I, yeah, right? I... And he does not. No, the person yeah. they picked, yeah, it's the not the... The change when you step in here versus hearing the orchestra here. I, I want, like, Eric Owens, and I know that's asking for a lot. <laughs> My God, what if, though? <laughs> what if? So yeah. And now we get they do they lop part off the highs here. when you exit to the lobby, which is excellent. And this will be a good point to watch the um, original. Yes, it will. Well, we'll watch I, the original. I, before she goes on stage, and we can we'll do them back to back. We'll do this with the aria. Okay. <laughs> yeah, could we do this with Met Opera, everybody? Have you always been that pretty? Uh, as no game. I do Zero like the games. Wolsey. I do like the Wolsey where he goes, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just, like, so flustered. Also, he's bright red. It's so cute. And she's, like, about to go on stage, but, like, no, let's have this out right now. Let's talk yep. about this right now. Yeah. Yep. Like, don't you I will have say, a script to we've learn? upgraded from zero game because zero game is like an inability to acknowledge that you actually have a thing for somebody and like you get weird about it. <laughs> Saying what you want can be okay. This is okay. I don't know if have you always been that pretty is a direct expression of. No, no, no. Sorry. This line here. Oh, yeah. Oh, this nothing. is, yeah, this is good. This line is okay. This, no, this is, have you always been that pretty thing. is an insult. Uh, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I really like the orchestral bits oh, of this so far. Not still in Zozo. Yeah, me too. I, like, so far I have loved the orchestration. I have, did not like Draco just now. That but slight, I again, the, the slight retardando there in the orchestra mm -hmm. as it cadenced was very good. I do not, in fact, need to check the score one last time. I, Are you I sure? Need the score? We All right, shall we go over? Yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Impresario. Scene two, nothing. <laughs> no, we haven't written it yet. All right, shall we go oh, yeah. over? Wait. Right, is... yes, she does. She says, am I just a substitute for her? Yes, you're right. She does mm -hmm. have the extra yeah. line of dialogue. Am I just a mm -hmm. replacement yeah. for her? Yep. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> All right. Which, you know, fair. <laughs> Which, um... Something we should probably address. We should, we should probably examine that at some point, yes. Goes on stage to do a job she's completely unqualified to do, does fine, and then... Yeah. Lauren, just, we yeah. decided to skip that in the interest of time and getting through the opera tonight. We're going to go back to it. All right. So, are you ready for me? Yes. All right. So, here's the overture as it originally sounded. And this is back to back. It has Draco in it and it has all the way up through what we just heard. Sure. typing. Sorry. So you notice I had to make a composite harp line here because it looks like trash spread out over four instruments. Yeah. But it's partially so you can have the sustain. Although it's interesting that SPC4 cuts it. But the other ones are all sustained a little bit. Yes. Oh, we were supposed to ping Julian. Somebody uh, do that. Oh. Dana, do that. Or yeah. maybe I can do, do that. realized before 
quite how much this part of the opera sounds exactly like a silent film score. Mm -hmm. I agree, by the way. This whole thing, I can only hear the impresario now as well. That's so fucking good. Just impossible good. Also, don't you love my my three texts? It's so beautiful. Yes. Yeah, that is actually really, really elegant. You did beautiful. Iruka. <laughs> <laughs> you should sing it, Ryan. Even I barely have. <laughs> I, I, I do it better than the singer did, though. The singer, like, yeah. doesn't have that note. Whoa. It's, it's, not, it's not objectively especially low. No, it's no. just uh, miscast. Notice I put this in violas because it goes down to an F sharp. Instead of just I mean, it is just a string sample, but. So this is Beethoven 9, right? That's what this part is? <laughs> yeah, very Beethoven 9 -y. Instruction for the viola player. <laughs> yeah, I, li I leave things in channel. I do not transcribe as a score, as an orchestral score. Because that's always interesting to me, is like what, what gets program? told to, yeah. to switch roles. Yeah. Yeah, if y'all can't read Alto Clef, too bad. <laughs> All right, do we want to cut ahead and do the aria now, Dana? But, but the, the flute thing. Also goes oh, right, to right. harpsichord. And the only reason that I didn't just copy um, down was because going uh, in the notation from a an unpitched percussion to a pitched uh, staff was not very easily possible. So that's why I just said those those bottom lines are the same. So we have our like harpsichord flute moment. Which I, I think they filled out really nicely in this newer version. I was going to say, I think the Pixel Remaster pinned this one right to the wall. Because <clears throat> it's kind of like, it's kind of like an innocent, you know, girly theme. It's kind of introducing Maria before she comes on. But it's also transitional, and it can loop as needed until you go on stage. All right, so. I don't think Julianne has responded. And how many times has somebody been like waiting on a page turn and just had to loop again. Seriously. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. Ideally right. not that often, but it, you know. All right, here's the aria. I might cry. It's just... I watched your performance uh, that Ryan tweeted before oh. as I was driving to pick up the cider. I might have cried. Yeah, seriously, uh, check out that tweet and go listen to Annie do this. So She's good. the best. <gasps> Hoagie time! There you are. Also, apologies, I didn't do the harp arpeggio. It spread across all the channels, and it was... Uh, it was taking forever. There it is. <laughs> Me too, Dark Sword. It's just like... Really good, like, bass section sound on this one. It's so rich. The horn comes melody absolutely rules. In this mm -hmm. The suspension. is like perfection. Yeah, this is a big moment for a lot of us that played this game when it was original. And we get this beautiful transition here. 
Continuation of that is my favorite. <laughs> so good. Same. Dana's. Uh, I'll leave it to her to decide what to do with them. I mean, I'm I'm pretty pretty cool sharing them with people if they if they need them for stuff. So, fun fact: you can actually get ahead of Draco and talk to him from behind at every point, and it doesn't look yes. like you're dancing, but you'll never lose. was the boss of the whole game. I love it. Oh yeah, and unrealistically, if you fuck up your blocking, they shut down the entire opera yeah. and make you do it again the next Obviously. It's like a It's like a literal nightmare. If you make one <laughs> mistake, the entire show will stop. <laughs> you will right? ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're like rent half a beat late, the, the owner of the whole building comes out on the stage and is like, why'd you fuck that up for everybody? <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's, it's the opera house from hell. <laughs> Classic. Oh, it's so beautiful. Alright, Julian, are you popping in here to say hi during the opera? You should. Also, Karen, while well, Karen is in chat, all of, our, all of our folks are... No, she's not. Okay. Hanging around. Okay. That's cool. We were about to go... <laughs> I feel like I need a long sip of my drink before this, <laughs> if Draco was any indication. Yes. <laughs> Sigma, they named it after me, Mezzo Carattere. That's how it works. They did. They named it after you. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, spoilers in advance, because I don't want to talk over this much. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm angry at this from four angles. And I will <laughs> oh, elaborate. <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, can we can we hold our takes till the end? Yes. Yes. Let's do so. Okay. Thanks. Show. 
This part's fine. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, like I said, the orchestration has been great. Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the waltz is really pretty. All of the waltzes in the Final Fantasy franchise are excellent. There's a baller waltz two-thirds of the way through FF5 as well. Ooh, Ooh hello. Aww. This is a good boyfriend. and perfect. Hello. This is beautiful. Hello, some Straussiness. <laughs> this is a film right. score. The waltz. Yeah. Film. Okay. Four things. It's a film score and it's a Rosen Cavalier. Okay. Yeah, okay. very, yeah. Thing number one, and we can all elaborate on these. Obviously, the performance is not great. And and listen, you all were saying so in chat, we are very well aware that the choice to have a non-professional opera singer was intentional because we don't expect the last minute fill-in who happens to look like the opera singer. Like, we know that. That but, is intentional. That said... But thing two... Would it? Thing two. <laughs> Darth Plagel's right. Uh, it's a choice they made. It's an informed choice. And it's absolutely, as Darth Plagel said the wrong choice and here's why though we don't learn it yet we have to get to vector first she's hinted at it once Celis is the product of significant abuse over the course of years the same as tara and she to date as the party has done a pretty good job of hiding that fact from them she's the confident former general the former enemy that's really not who she is she's an abused girl who was put into that position. Here's the thing. In the Super Nintendo version of this performance, and canonically, it goes well. It goes miraculously well. And it's the one thing she's ever done that went well on her own terms, ever. As a result, later, when she's wistful, thinking about what could have been, her character theme is this moment because it's the mm -hmm. one time it worked. So while she didn't have to be full opera, she could have been stronger than she was here. May I give my entire take in like one fell swoop or should yeah, we go point by point? Do it. Interject, go ahead. <laughs> so, okay. My first reaction on hearing it, and this is true when I listened to it alone as well, I was literally like, is this a Vocaloid because of how processed the sound was? Like, I I wasn't sure if it was a human singing, if it had been, like, mixed in some strange way somehow. And I did, um, as Lauren the Flute said, I went and um, Googled the woman who they hired to do it. Um, there's another woman with her same name who is a professional jazz singer. I'm pretty sure that's not who ended up doing this. I think the person who did this is another person who sang on like the Attack on Titan soundtrack, for example, but also, as far as I could tell from the internet, her main work is doing mostly English language, but not exclusively. She's American, she moved to Japan and now she's in show business. Um, so it makes sense that they would want to hire someone else to do this. From that context, what it leads me to believe is that the reason she sings this way, she, in the Attack on Titan song, she sounds quite nice. Um, I think a lot of that is because the style is so different. I think that she uses that to inform her technique. But I also think that the way her technique has developed is suited to the medium in which she works, which is highly processed recorded sound. In order to sing well, for a highly processed recording, which every recording of non-classical music is going to be highly processed, it just is. What you need to do is sound as even as possible to make it easier for the engineers to make you sound good, essentially. As soon as you introduce anything like a vibrato or like expression and stuff, like the work that an engineer has to do gets immensely more difficult and it ends up sounding inconsistent and weird because those are all techniques that were born for live performance. They sound great when you are in a room with someone, and especially if there aren't microphones or editing or anything like that. Your mind glosses over the imperfections, it's not the same thing. So the result of this is 
this person sounding essentially mechanical because she, for whatever reason, or on her own, or both probably, has been instructed to make a sound as inoffensive, as like totally smooth as possible. And in the context of a scene that is meant to be from an opera, it sounds completely unidiomatic because that's not how operatic performance works. So, like, was it a good idea to get some, like, okay, also now fast forward to could Celis do this? No, not a fucking chance. She could not do this, but not only could she not do this, she couldn't do the blocking. She probably wouldn't fit the costume. There's no part of this that anyone can just walk on stage and just do. So you have to suspend your disbelief in the beginning. If you're suspending your disbelief that much, why not also just get someone who's a trained singer so that it sounds like at least the unbelievability of it is pleasant. On the other hand, I respect the fact that someone somewhere was like, yo, if we just pulled someone off the street and asked them to sing the song, it probably would sound about like that. Because singing with expression is really, really hard. Like, it's easier when it's a song that you know. And I'm not, this isn't even about style. It's not about opera or pop or belt or legit or like whatever you're doing. It's just about the skill level that it takes in order to allow your emotions to affect your voice without either breaking down or sounding like a weird robot. And she sounds kind of like a weird robot. So in conclusion, I wish they had done something different. But if they had just pulled someone off the street who could basically carry a tune to get in the costume, stand on stage, and try to pass for an opera singer, it probably would sound a little bit like that, except without direction. Basta cozy. Hooray. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Agreed. Uh, I mean, perfect. perfect. I wanted to say that for a really long time. Thanks for giving me so This is why we had you here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Really quickly, my points three and four are related and very quick. There's a, blo- there's a blocking moment that's breathtakingly effective in the Super Nintendo version. When Celis sings I'm the Darkness on the Super Nintendo, she disappears behind the column. It's so good. Here, she stood there with her mouth open. <laughs> like, yeah. and did not do that. Uh, and for me, and maybe it's because I, like, overanalyzed things like a little weirdo when I was a kid, but that moment to me was really important in terms of, like, what the cinematography of the medium held in potential. And we lose totally. it here. Uh, it actually makes me afraid to get to the epitaph sequence, which is the highlight of this game's use of game camera cinematography it's absolutely a master class in what is possible in this medium that's not possible in a film or not possible uh live the the epitaph sequence is a tremendous achievement and now like i'm afraid they're gonna mess that up too uh similarly uh point four you don't actually have to do any of the dancing yourself anymore. You just press the A button three times, and the game handles everything for you. Yeah, I noticed that. You didn't have to, like, follow Draco around. You didn't have to, like, be... Right. I didn't realize and that. I, I was like, like, oh, man, he's good at this. Yeah. Maybe I'm, it was, like, maybe I'm snobby five, it about it. And again, this does not matter as much as all of the vocal stuff, because that's more... And whether or not it works, because that's tied to uh, Celis' character, as I said. But... I liked having to do the blocking because like then you get to be a part of the opera as opposed to just selecting the dialogue. Right? Totally. Yeah. And it's so gratifying. You, when you think of yourself as a performer, it changes the way you understand it. The chat's getting a little saucy. Yeah. <laughs> Called Final Fantasy chat. not a map stream, right? <laughs> Dana, yeah. anything? Uh, I I would be very curious to hear at least one other language, but I don't. Do we want to like fight Ultras, go through the whole thing, and then can we hear another maybe language? St- Let's and hear then another maybe language stay after right class. now. And can we stay up late and finish this so I can save? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. So I'm gonna question mute is, this. this. So Lawrence's French is her favorite, but I know that like we kind of want to hear either Japanese or maybe we could. We don't have to do the whole thing. Maybe we could start. All three. I am 100. And then if we yeah, really, if we really like here, one, we could stick like, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and on the Octopath Traveler stuff, I actually don't because they met. It, 
it messes up the blocking. I almost don't like it, and I love that effect. Octopath Traveler is like, like, a tear-inducingly gorgeous game if you've not played it. And if I'm sure the ground-up remake of Dragon Quest Three is going to be that way as well, if they think about it the right ways. But I think here they did it because they could, not because it elevated the experience, which is worse. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm going we have to fun here. add this to the stream. And can you share it to Discord too? I will. Oh really? Only 163? I watched it. I listened to it uh, in on my phone in the car as I was like driving to do some errands earlier, and I I was I sat in the car very happily listening to your performance. So. That's so nice. <laughs> At least I got to hear like a good version of this before. <laughs> I I am happy and kind of flabbergasted that anyone has listened to it. So I I am delighted. Yeah. No. We if anything we have undersold how good Annie is. Uh, I still think of, like, when I hear Dragon Song, I actually think of Annie's performance rather than the original, because that's what I heard first. Oh, that's the front door. That's it so nice so of you. so good. All right. Well, yeah, I, I remember during during that concert, we were all like, you guys, <laughs> so good. Like, texting each other. Okay. Are we? Oh, we're in Italian. Okay. We're in Italian. Oh. <laughs> Amor mio. Amor mio. <laughs> Reverb will replace vibrato for this performance. <laughs> the whitest searing folks' eyes. There, there we go. means hope. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, I like this better than like Julian. <laughs> From the chat, at no time in history has anybody described Julian Grasso as big and fat. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, Lauren, what this sounds like is someone who, like, it sounds like my sister, who is an amazing singer and has never studied opera, but has a really good ear and can just kind of like imitate the sound. So that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like somebody imitating the sound of an opera singer, like a shout. Have you, kind of you, like you've taken, have you taken Italian, Ryan? Uh, I was okay when I had to be as an undergrad, but I've never taken the language. Okay, because I was just checking that that you knew the pun, because grasso grassa is fat in Italian. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) I know you were defending and being wonderful, but I I just wanted to make sure. (laughs) It's actually, it's interesting that you say that, Bruno. Um, And aren't you glad you got me further onto a soapbox about my favorite topic? But the reason (laughs) opera sounds the way it does has a lot to do with the the way the Italian language works. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. like, when you try to make someone speaking Italian with that placement and resonance and physical stuff going on, try to sound as loud as possible. What you get is opera versus in English. What you get is musical theater, which is a lot of people going like this. They're belting. Yeah. I have such a natural I'm going to jump belt. ahead to Japanese. I don't think we need to hear the third verse of each language here. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, okay. I'm really, I'm really excited for the, the Japanese actually. So <laughs> 
You may have to supply that yourself, Julian. Oh my Johns. <laughs> so far oh away now. <laughs> we'll get to we German. Can start German. Yeah, we can do that. Wo ist mein Verliebter? Wo ist mein Verliebter? I think this confirms Annie's theory here because this is also a very anime tone. Yes, it is. I don't hate this quite as much, though. It's smoother, I think, overall. Bruno, yes. I, like, want to sing to the subtitles. <laughs> For what it's worth, relative to this is a off-color hegemonic thing, I guess, but it makes sense that they would direct intentionally the Japanese and the English and kind of make the other languages work. To me. <laughs> Lauren pointed this out in the chat. Yeah. Tagalog version one? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I want a Tagalog version, for sure. I also, I also want the Woolsey version. Like oh, just, it's like an Easter egg. Someone I'm trying, trying to do that. like jam it's those really syllables easy. into the. <laughs> you can like sort of make it work. Yeah. I, I'm, as a kid, I did. I sang. I sang to it. I'm sure we all, anyone with that translation, like we found a oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> <The mariner>. yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's jump ahead. French is next. Who said French is the best? Lauren did. Lauren. Right? Yeah, I'm excited. My French pronunciation is hot trash, by the way. I never learned to do it. Oh, same, same here. I only text in French. I never speak French intentionally. That's cool that you text in French, though. Yeah, <laughs> when a certain musicologist friend of ours gets a few drinks in him, he often starts texting me in French, and so I respond in kind. That's amazing. <laughs> it's really good practice. Bruno, please make this Portuguese. And then send me a file of yourself reciting Robert. I agree that this vocalist Wait, why am I not hearing has more operatic training for sure than the others we've heard so far. Oh wait, I can't hear this either. Yeah, it's like crashed in Discord. Oh no, do I need to restart it? Oh, here we go. Oh, damn. Oh yeah, this is good. This is actually, this is like, quite good. Yeah. Oh, this is great! This is beautiful. Ooh, the rhyme there in French is really elegant too. Dark Sword, that is actually just her voice sounding fuller. What yes. you're also perceiving she just in has addition more to like tone is that it sounds right? easier for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, how full someone sounds in any kind of register can make an effect on the how I feel that that register is. So for her, this just sounds like she's not going to be very good. I'm going to jump ahead. I, I want to hear the third verse in the French. Yeah, it's so pretty. The funny thing about this is that it seems pretty clear to me that she has had a shit ton of brain because that's kind of what it takes to make it sound this you know, I mean, like the makeup paradox <laughs> like no makeup makeup whatever like oh you look so naturally beautiful and then and then you, and then you watch the youtube tutorial and you're like oh i can't contour no thanks <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that Right. Yeah, that that's beautiful. I like that one. God, it's, I'm just in Korean. That, woo, cool. I, that one really hits on all the points we were hoping for. She has a lovely clarity to her voice. This is nice. Yeah.
Yeah, this sounds more like what if it was just K-pop? <laughs> that would be funny. There's much more vibrato here than there was in the Japanese performer. Yeah. To me, this feels like a good middle ground of a trade then. Yeah. It's not, again, it's not like you really This is up there with the French, though, in terms of that just really beautiful tone. I agree with Lauren's <laughs> comment in chat that this sounds like somebody yeah, singing head naturally head. and not doing a specific yeah. technique the way the English singer is clearly doing something. It's just something we don't like. Yeah. And for reference, I have zero Korean background, so I can't speak to anything regarding like the naturalness of the language use here. Here's German. Which is my best language. Ah. I can speak to this pretty well. I'm conversational there. Genau. So, so I'm excited for this. Mein Deutsch ist nicht schlecht. Let's go. <laughs> nicht schlecht. Mein Deutsch ist sehr schlecht. Ma, ma, yeah. sehr, sehr schlecht. Leider schlecht. <laughs> so Hochzeit mit dem Bett. Salsa gezwungen. Schick mal den jetzt hier doch noch immer für Dreck. Oh, oh genau. <laughs> I love that you finished that sentence with a giant swig from the bottle. Yes, well done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Madison. Yes, it is. Baller. That's amazing. Yeah, this is good shit. Sour Do you know um, her nationality, Madison? It's reasonably rare for a vocalist to be this good in two languages, by the way. Yeah. Opera singers then, should should have Italian it's, it's and German though, on right? The kind of drink you have, yeah. Yeah. And then, if, Ideally, yeah, I guess, depending on your voice type, you might do more French, but English, Italian, German, French. It's when you get into like Duke Bluebeard's Castle, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna need a phonetic translation. <laughs> well, there you go, French German. <laughs> Yeah, neither my French nor my German is good enough to tell whether or not she has an accent, but it kind of just, it sounds good to me. Yeah, I, I really like her voice. If she is Swiss Sigma, she is not singing in Swiss German. <laughs> She's singing in <laughs> sehr gutes Hochdeutsch. So the yeah, German version I can her. speak to in the way that I couldn't the French version, but the quality was eminent anyway, that this works for the Celis character where like she has this miraculous moment where regardless of why it should or should not work it does and she has to hold on to this because it's all she's got like I believe that story hearing this vocalist Maria lass uns tanzen oh my god it's so fun to say always Spanish now Ooh, cool. oh cool si sí, por favor Please record it. Friendly or false. Obligada a casarse con el Ralce, Príncipe del Este, María Busca Solas, I lost something! Yeah, this is not one of my languages, so I will have nothing to contribute to the Spanish here. You didn't study it like in high school? No, I did French and German and Latin. Ooh, Castilian. I cannot roll my R's. Fun fact. I too renovate promises. <laughs> renovate promises. <laughs> Bruno is right to point out that this does not rhyme. Yeah, they didn't even try. No. Fine. In German and in French it did though, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Yeah. Trying to make the syllabification work. <laughs> Mm 
miércoles. So those are all the vocalists. Hey, Maria, baila conmigo. The German and the French vocalists. <laughs> Dang. Why couldn't we get that? I'm kind of angry. <laughs> yeah, it was real like, nice. We really, yeah. we that got was the good. shaft I'm not here. angry because <laughs> the other ones are better. I'm angry because the directorial choices surrounding the performance were wildly different across the languages. It's mm-hmm. definitely weird. I wonder why they did that. Also, um, 8-Bit Aria, I am interested in what you said that the singers that we liked the most are Coloratura Sopranos, because that also actually makes sense based that on... tracks, yeah. Working. It totally tracks, yeah. Um, like, back in the day when Lauren and I and some other folks were working on an unfortunately never-to-be-completed um, musical adaptation of Final Fantasy VI, we got to hear auditions, which is not something I had ever done. And the people who sounded best in the recorded medium were not necessarily the people with like the lowest voices in this context. Like part of that was just because of how the piece was written, but also some of that is because in order to get that sound that feels so like light, delicate and easy, it doesn't actually matter how loud you are when you're recording. It doesn't matter if you project or cut or how much like weight you have. And often that stuff is actually like super hard to record so that it sounds good like recording low voice singers, uh, low voice female singers at least is harder than recording higher voice singers to an extent. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can totally be an untrained singer and sound amazing. It's not about that. It's more about like, uh, like directorial choices. Yeah, so Lenny, quick random trivia small world stuff. That's how I met Lauren, is I heard that some group of folks we're doing a Final Fantasy VI opera, and one of the vocalists in the one trailer that got released, I know super well. She's like fifth on my speed dial. And so I said, <laughs> hey, this is amazing. Who do I send this like chapter with every piece of music, with every scene analyzed, thinking of Final Fantasy VI as an opera? Because I was finishing that book chapter at the time. And I met both John Robert Matz and uh, Lauren by sending that book chapter, an early draft of it, their direction. That's so awesome. And yeah, I was super pumped <laughs> to hear it all. But alas. Alas. It, it, this For is a variety of legal crappiness, we will not have it. But they have, I am, and I have not seen it. I, I think Lauren is the one kind of in charge of the writing for it. I'm pretty sure they have like most of the libretto worked out if they had the permissions to do it. Sad face. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I like the suspension, you know, of, <laughs> I, I, I'm agreeing with Chad here that like, I, I wouldn't have minded just making it sound good. It's like when we have all these like modern musical adaptations and we're like, sure, let's have Russell Crowe sing. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> Can we have Les Mis with actual... <laughs> like actual people oh that this is why i haven't seen a lot of these modern musicals because i'm like i don't want to hear the natural voice i want to hear the overdubbed marnie nixon style like i want to hear good things can we stop i do think it's important to say this doug that it is true that it does not require a specific kind of training in order to be a good singer um I do, I am going to push back a little bit. I do think that it, what it does require is practice and feedback, which isn't quite the same thing as training. But I think that when people are not experienced with singing, it is super, super rare to be able to just open your mouth and have what comes out sound good. Yeah, totally. And, and at that the level of that, specificity like, that we're talking about, there's a big difference between you have a very nice voice and you can sing this specific style that has specific demands of your muscles well. Exactly. There are yeah. shit tons of styles that I, a heavily trained singer, sound ridiculous singing. I don't sound good doing it because I don't have the stylistic practice. Unfortunately, I think that that often works in reverse. Too. Like, no one can be good. Not no one, but it's hard to be good at singing multiple styles and you really have to work at it. 
So you can't just kind of like plop yourself up and like, if you're a musical theater singer, you can't just plop yourself up and sing opera. And if you're an opera singer, you can't just plop yourself up and sing musical theater. People can, but it's not super common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the train, it, I mean, it's it's similar to like the closest that I can come to that is I was, I was trained as a pianist. And at one point I got asked to play a theater pit <laughs> and it was uh, 25th annual Putnam County spelling bee. And th that piano part was, we don't have the money to hire an orchestra. So here, let's plop it all in the piano part. So it's like, you're covering so many things at once. You know, there's all the stride piano stuff. Like it's just the, the idiom is so different that I'm like, okay, I played the Greek concerto. Like I was not a bad pianist, but I was struggling to keep up with it. Cause I'm like, this just ain't my idiom. You know, yeah, it's a different skill set. Yeah. And that's what, Doug, I think you mean when you say untrained, meaning like don't go to music school to study opera. Going to music school to study opera doesn't make you a good singer. It can make you a good opera singer. But like, And, right. and hopefully they're giving you like yeah. the tools to use the voice properly where you're not going to, you know, give yourself nodes, you know? Yeah. Like if I go up in a karaoke bar and try to like belt out fucking like Whitney Houston, I'm going to sound ridiculous. I'm not going to hurt myself, but it's not going to sound good. It's just because it's not a skill set that I have. Yeah. Dana, do you have the video for the next, when I talk to the impresario, the music is going to switch? Do you, yes. I'm going to mute this then and let's do that, please. Uh, let's see, that's wedding waltz. Wedding waltz. Yeah, most of my training, for what it's worth, because on paper, remember, I'm not a music major, I'm a Bachelor of Liberal Studies undergrad. Ooh, uh, really? Yeah, which is the adventure own degree that. at Iowa State. And my voice nice. teacher was like, I know you're headed to grad school. Like I've come to know you over the couple of years. You don't need to learn to sing German opera. You need to learn to sound good in church and like use your voice in your day to day life. Cause that's how you're going to get Which, a job with it someday. 100% true for you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I am a baller Lutheran choir singer. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I believe you. It's a specific skill set. It's just, it's all just skill sets and not one absolutely. is better than any other. It's Whereas, I'm just that rare violinist that's conservatory trained, but I was also in a rock orchestra. So I'm oh, just good at everything. Yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you probably are though. Yeah. I, I could be better at classical, but you know, I, I gig. But you know, the conservatory <laughs> yeah. would tell you you'd be better if your parents would mortgage their home to get you a real violin. Oh, they did tell me that. I actually, I told that story to Pete's class this morning. Um, that they, when I was a freshman, they told me, "Well, you really need to be on a twelve thousand dollar violin." And I was like, "Who's buying that, you guys?" Because <laughs> like, I just saved up for like three summers to get this three thousand dollar violin, and I'm sticking with it. Yeah, it's a conservatory sort of problem. Anyway, here's the wedding waltz. It's a, it's a <laughs> Are you ready thing. for me? Yes, go. I'm so glad we're having this discourse, you guys. This is very lucky for me. Oh, I love this. Once more, I can only hear the impresario. Tio Mato. <laughs> that timpani. It's so crisp. So this is actually one that I had transcribed before uh, we decided to do this, and I decided to transcribe the whole score um, because we'll hear it again in the loop. This actually comes back in Kafka in Dancing Mad at the very end of the freaking game, which is an interesting clue to kind of his like delusions of grandeur, like <laughs> moment, uh, sort of like this this operatic way that he sees himself. Um, and I'll show you the moment that comes back. It's this thing at the double bar. Da 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 da. Yeah. da. That's gonna show up again in Dancing Mad. So just a little, little foreshadowing. <laughs> also, the great. best viola line right there. That little counter melody in the viola just kills me every time. <laughs> so good. All right, let's hear what they've done with it. Yeah. This is one of the pieces, again, they need to pin this to the wall. So far, I've loved, again, I've loved the orchestration for everything. The the overture, the the little, like, flutey transitional moment, the, the dance, everything's been good so far. Same. Yeah. Oops. This one. It's exactly off. kind of what, what I was expecting. All right, let's have but... it. <laughs> that said... Oh, 
I'm not seeing it on Discord. Brian, can you reshare to Discord? Yes, I'm on it. Thank you. Oh, this is great. Oh, we doubled. Da -da 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 -da. Ooh, the little swells and dynamics are fun. Oh, no, more singing. <laughs> yeah, the version I did is obviously later than this. Oh, that scoop. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, really? I kind of dig that. Ooh, Draco's an octave higher than the original now. That's because only tenors can get it. I just, I want, I want Tenors, more. I'm fist bumping you all. Fist bumping I want more me. in the supposedly professional opera singers here. Yeah, I don't get why all of them don't have more resonance. Like I, I can, I can forgive Celis here. <laughs> Whatever, I, the... I like the change. Ooh, that's Tenors can get it. I like it. <laughs> Tenors always get it. Here we had a rare moment where a non-tenor got to get it. Oh, also, yes, Dark Star. Then I will die sooner than see you gone. It's so good. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, it's good. Rolf is also not an opera singer in English. Like, it was fine. But again, I just, it's like, I want there to be a contrast. If we're going to do the whole, like, oh, she's not the trained singer thing, right. then we're going to make this conscious choice. I want the other ones to, like, blow her away. <laughs> and it's I want to hear the disconnect. really commit to the bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I like think why, why is 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 everybody just filling in with the understudies tonight? Like what? It's just, yeah, it's COVID. All the covers are on. It's also, that's not even a good excuse because I don't know if y'all saw the J Hunter Morris like stepping into Siegfried on six weeks notice, but that was like a legendary performance. So it can oh, be yeah. done. You can be an understudy yeah. and still nail it. Yeah, it was unfair of me to say that because covers are usually the shit. Yeah. Understanding, and honestly, I think, you honestly, know, is fresh much voices harder and everything. than being able to practice that same part all the damn time. Understudying is tough and not, like, credited. Oh, it's there's so a, hard. There's, there's a freshness to it, you know, that, I mean, Siegfried, was a, that, that's, like, mythical because that's just such a, a an endurance race, <laughs> that role. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I felt like there, there, I was on the edge of my seat watching that. That was one of the ones that they did live at the Met. And I went to the movie theater and saw it, and I was like on the edge of my seat because I'm like, not that I thought he was gonna screw it up, but I could feel that he he wasn't like old hat at it. <laughs> and it was one of the most exciting performances ever. And I'm not normally like a huge Wagner person, so it, it was a really special moment. That's cool. The actor playing Draco is actually a member of a completely different adventure. <laughs> Yeah, he's the, the warrior of light. Yeah, again, I, l I like the illustration here. This is great. It's it's what I would have hoped for. Totally. They, yeah. They've got really nice balance. They're, you know, nailing the style of, of what the original is implying here. Yeah. <laughs> actor the playing Draco's fight member. is actually going to be difficult party. for me. I'm not excited about that. Okay, can we watch the opera where, like, the opera behind the opera where, like, we're trying to get to Setzer, but then we we see the other party that's also trying to capture him? I like what Sigma Beta and Dark Sword are writing here. <laughs> this, okay, this is an oh, opera I would watch. Um. Okay. <laughs> All this like mistaken identity. It's like it's like it's very Mozarty. <laughs> It's funny that you say that, Sigma, because that is absolutely a thing that has happened. Like, in my experience. <laughs> January, like, January VI. I mean, not literal January 6th, but just like, I've absolutely heard of people who's a dog who's never used to get back. 
Yeah. Excuse me. I got asked. Uh, fantasy food. I got asked to submit proof of vaccination to a school that fired me. But because I was still oh. in their system, they were like, could, could you update this? And I'm like, well, give me a class to teach, then maybe. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> <laughs> like it's I like was when awkward. you apply to a that program that rejects you, then they put you on the mailing list. Yeah, and it's like of course so, I'm triple vaxxed. I've got a 14 month old. Like uh, you know, we we were like sign us up. Every time I go to the doctor and they're like she needs vaccines, I'm like I don't even care what they are, just give them to her. Like <laughs> we're good. We are we are on board with the vaccines, but yeah, it was just like you're asking me, and like I'm not even on your payroll at the moment. Or it was in so... this house. You <laughs> believe in vaccination? Yeah, even if it's up higher. Was ridiculous. Also, how's a four ton weight like sitting on an unsupported beam like that? I've always wondered. <laughs> I love that That's Draco steps fun. backwards before he gets landed on. This is a situation in which the impresario might actually step stand on stage. Yeah, try to figure out. He like... would not say that, but that could happen. The weights are counterweights to the sets. I guess it would have to be right. Well, the first, usually thing, the first real thing they would do is close the fly curtain. System. No joke. Like if that, this many people get yeah. injured this badly, the curtain closes. Yeah, there's a lot of unconscious <laughs> actors at the moment. <laughs> Takes five minutes for an octopus to move a four-ton weight. Well, I mean, the tentacles—they're kind of slippery. That—that's a slippery slope indeed, Dana. I see what I, you did there. I've. I've I've seen too many things involving octopi. <laughs> I mean, based on your expertise. Yeah, it's it's a weird. And actually, the funny thing was, I encountered that long before I did any porn research. It was I took a Japanese anthropology course for my minor mm. in Japanese in undergrad, and that's where I encountered tentacle porn. They it was like I it was a China <laughs> specialist that was very mad that they were forcing her to teach a like Japanese anthropology course because it was all the anime nerds, of course, uh, and the, and the Japanese minors that needed it for the credit. And she was just like, everything we do in this class is like the negative aspects of Japanese society. And everyone was like, what the hell? Like, it was a lot <laughs> at 21, 22 years old to be like, what am I seeing right now? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, this piece is excellent in the remaster. This really fits Ultros. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I thought I might eat it. Rats. Oh, no, no, it's done. Ha ha ha. Okay. Nice! Also, if you order octopus in a Japanese restaurant, it's taco. I just love that. Mmm, taco. You can get good old taco yaki. But yeah, taco. It's so fun. I'm, most I'm glad um, Setzer has the lighting designers on his side. Yeah, he does. He I like that Celeste like, apparently <laughs> wears her cape underneath her dress. Yeah. Quick Why changes. Not? You like have to you be do. ready. You have to be ready to do those quick changes. I love Sigma Beta. It was like a slightly impressive performance at most. <laughs> right. Yeah, he clearly isn't that obsessed with the singer Maria if he can't, if he can't tell yeah, her if he apart can't from a rank amateur. <laughs> also, I love that he's treating this like come back and see part two it's like is this a television show like, like that's not how tune in next works. week <laughs> on dragon ball Z. generally generally yeah it's <laughs> generally not how we opera they did keep yeah, her imprisoned she... sprite there and in the game boy advance release and this release that's the only moment her imprisoned sprite appears because again they don't I... ever chain her to the wall in South Figaro because, you know, you don't chain up and beat women. Uh, that's yeah. bad. Which is a good call. Ugh, I don't like I'll give you plenty of attention later. That's Where's the saxophone now? <laughs> I am... Um... Oh, <laughs> skeezy line right there. <laughs> oh, the wink, though. The wink this is good. This might be, like, tipping my hand a little too much, but I've read people who write fanfic to make this all okay by saying that Setzer and Maria have been involved forever. This is just, like, something that they do. They're into, like, kidnapping fantasy. Yeah, this, okay. this, is, this is their M.O. 
I honestly, I've seen people make similar accounts of Mario, Peach, and Bowser, and that there's like a cuckold fetish. So oh, that's worse than that. <laughs> oh man, no. Uh, yeah, there are some, uh, there are some really horrible places on the internet relating to video games. <laughs> really and sometimes it's not even stuff that i discover it's because joe just trolls me with it (laughs) and then i then i'm like i didn't need to know that existed thank you (laughs) the s and bdsm stands for (laughs) and the m stands for maria oh my god (laughs) i've got a i've got a good friend who reads bad fanfic as a podcast which is kind of tremendous actually wait can i get the name of that podcast (laughs) Is it the My Father Wrote a Porno? Because that one's really funny. That one is funny, yeah. I, I didn't keep up with it, but the f- first season was it's pretty Friday Night amusing. Fan Fiction. Uh, Friday yeah, Night Fan Fiction. Kind of yeah, there's, the there is quite a bit Ooh, of fan fiction out there. All right. Oh, don't put me in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why am I with Bannon? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank He's you. He's not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's just not my type. So oh, oh. The, the reason we brought the reason we brought the brothers. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Y'all are ruining my life in the chat. That's usually Joe's job, but he's not watching right now. I'm pretty sure he's playing Elden Ring. <laughs> I mean, there sets, you go. Sets are now's not the time. The time has never been, but it's like it's especially not now. It's especially well, not now. From conventional morality. <laughs> that's, that's true. We are on his like pleasure ship. That's right. <laughs> Touche, Annie. Yes. <laughs> so what? Ooh, yeah, why does she Bannon blush in the complaint. original? It is my I complaint. I don't think yes. she blushes. I think she does. I can't remember. I like it as a counterpoint to Locke's blushing, actually. Yeah. All right. <laughs> On one condition. Yeah, tonical porn was one of those, like, real loss of innocence moments because it's not something that I discovered organically. It was the purely one, from that class. <laughs> the one problem I have with this is either Celis is a tactical genius from being a general in the Empire and knows the Figaro brothers' backstories, or she's gotten to know them way better than she has any right to over how long she's known them. To oh, know like all of this and put all the pieces in the original. Yeah. Edgar blushes in the original too since they share a color palette. I love that. Mm. Partially because like he tries to flirt with everybody, so the idea that he'd be like a little like fired up about this whole situation. <laughs> like, oh man, she's gonna marry him. I like it. Right. Except and I like that he's just like, yeah, great. <laughs> Lock <laughs> that that side eye is so good. Everything goes dark. I think you can attribute her knowing the coin to she's the Empire's general who would know things. Or she just looked at it and noticed that the sides were the same. She was just like, Edgar, why are you always playing with that two-headed coin? Right, like there was a moment off screen. (laughs) This is, this is your bonus line of dialogue. Sabin realizes it and makes the connection in real time. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is really cool, putting that in context. The Empire might know over the course of 10 years when working with Edgar, is my argument there, Lauren. Obviously, it's a suspension of disbelief either way, but it's possible that 10 years, remember, Sabin hasn't seen Edgar or the coin, the Empire might know him better. Hmm. I, I like all of this fanfic. Got him! I mean, I agree that, like, not overthinking it, is uh what kind of gambler doesn't <laughs> check the coin <laughs> an actual gambler <laughs> my life's a chip in your pile that's a wolseyism that's kept yeah 
so good though. It is. Chip in your file. We still don't get to save. Sadly, we have to finish what this it, piece here. Who was it earlier that said that his skill should have been renamed to Chip Tease? <laughs> <laughs> when things fall, they fall. Like, not very reassuring when we're asking about your airship, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, he's a he's a realist. This is establishing him as the gambler job, right? too far <laughs> yeah he was flirting with her they had walk and talks could have come up I I honestly never thought too hard about that I, I just assumed like or maybe she, did she wait did she borrow his coin or did she maybe she had her own too no she coin. walks over and borrows no she borrowed it yeah okay she does she, borrow she it. consulted with him yeah that's I crucial see. to Sabin realizing that the two headed coin yeah. was in play yeah Oh, this theme. I have Look, this. Sigma, you mentioned that the brothers are overpowered. Counterpoint in this edition of the game specifically, Cyan doesn't have to charge sword techs anymore. You just pick one and you get it. Do... Since this is, like, the moment, do we want to Emperor... I have this queued up. Yeah, let's do it. We may as well, since we're, like, landing here. Yeah. Guys, this is a good game. It's a very good. It's game. like a, so I think yeah. that it might be a lion's roar, like giving it another listen, <laughs> uh, right? Which Let is me... like one of my favorite pieces of um, percussion land. <laughs> it's so good there, right. it, it, I, and maybe whenever. Drum Ultima, maybe uh, maybe Doug can can tell us if that's a lion's roar, but it kind of sounds like it. Anyway, here's the original. Oh, Ugh, the tubular bells. So faithful. It's very like proto Sephiroth. Also, yeah. this bum 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 bum. That that chromatic descent is associated with the Empire, um, and in general, um, it shows up in all of the Imperial themes. Also, this is like kind of like evil Terra. Da 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 da. da. And of course, we got our little militaristic snare. And our brass to be also militaristic. And it's ominous. I feel that tubular bells is more specific than chimes. But yeah, I mean, I've heard both for them. Because chimes also have, like, hand chimes. <laughs> Tubular bells are chimes from the 80s. I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> and then I get caught up in the transcription. Oh, yeah, wind chimes, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug, I think it's because you, like... Wind chimes are the instrument of Bravely Default. <laughs> so yeah, that's like yeah. the Empire theme. Um, but if you compare that against uh, Troops March On in particular, um, you're going to notice a lot of the same the same contours. <laughs> this is a Steam Cam's, Cam's reference. Where do I land next to? Albrook. We don't need to go to and Albrook we've... right now. Also, we've already we've already heard the under under martial law, but we can always review some of these in future weeks too, as we get to a point where we're not doing as many. Yeah. Um, we can Next always pull week, up videos I think again. we're taking a break from Final Fantasy VI to do something random. I don't know what something random is yet. Because next week is the North American Conference of Video Game Music, which is over the weekend, and so we sort of were thinking next week might be like a fun, you know, shenanigans gaming. Maybe we do some Jackbox. Maybe we do some silly one-off things. Um, but, yeah, we've got some time. But I've finished basically all of my transcriptions unless I get requests for ones that I have not yet done. So, as always, if you have any that you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, you can, you know, message me here or on probably on Twitter <laughs> or elsewhere. Um, and just let me know if there's in, in particular ones you want to see the original for. I'm pretty much musicologist everywhere. Um, 
too. Yeah, if there's yeah, yeah next, next, is next week. week. I don't actually know how to access it online. I am not hosting this year. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen the links yet. Someone was asking me about that recently. Um, yeah, it's the same same as VGM Con. I mean, your online ticket should have been free, right? Is that, am I remembering that correctly, Damon? No, online online was like 20, 25 bucks or something like that. But hey, it supports us, so. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah, we can raid somebody. That's fine. Staccato, the start of the melody is killing me. <laughs> you could go into Albrook and just hang there for a second. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We can do that. Before we close out. Yeah, let me do that, actually. It's late. I'm not going to... Yeah. I don't like raiding anybody if I'm not going to stay on and, like, participate with them. I think Sigma was just saying, get out of the map theme, because he can doesn't like Can we stop Terra. listening to the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can absolutely stop doing that. Do you have any yeah. really good, like, OC remixes? <laughs> Oh, yes, that's how we have to end the stream. Oh my gosh, of course. Duh. I'm so stupid. There have got to be a couple people in chat who haven't heard this. We must end the stream with this. I'm excited. If it's anywhere near as good as Shadow with... Wait, Dana, have you not heard the impresario? What? No. Oh, everybody. Dana hasn't heard it. I'm excited. Okay, we now have some minutes to go. Uh, Dana must hear this, and she must hear it right now. Okay, sounds good. I have no idea what you guys are talking hey. about. I'm excited. Okay, wait, I have to share it in Discord. How does how do none of you... Annie, have you not heard this? No, what is it? Holy shit, I'm just not going to tell you. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Jake Love that. Kaufman did this for the oh, Final well, Fantasy VI right. okay. <laughs> album. And Jake, the description here in the... You can't read it because of the resolution on stream. But Jake is a composer capable of writing intricate, memorable pieces of music or even entire soundtracks in almost no time at all. He's most famous for Shovel Knight, by the way, but he does a lot of the way forward stuff now. I love uh, Shovel Knight. In fact, I listen to that all the time. He has an entire album consisting of songs written in less than one hour, uh, which is true, and it's an excellent album. With that in mind, consider that this took him more than four months to do. Okay. Here we go. I'm excited. This is so good. Look into the sins of your past. <laughs> Love as if today were your last. This is Bohemian Rhapsody.
quickly during this, the idea that one vocalist has this much range is unfair. I've been very impressed. It's pretty awesome. Some people just get all the notes, you know? really wanted falsetto. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody piano in there. Even the bass line is such a good clean reference. Oh my god. <laughs> Of course, yeah, required. Yeah, respect the massive shoe holding Sigma. <laughs> right in there.
Wow. Holy shit. That's the best, everybody. Correct. Oh, that's that is speaking, the best. That's speaking a lot of my languages right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't mean Italian and Japanese. <laughs> that uh, that neither of you have heard this before. That's pretty great. Yeah. I, that alone made this night worth it. I, I really want to pick that apart because, like, the the whole construction of it i mean yes it's bohemian rhapsody but like there are things that are even external to bohemian rhapsody that like the queen references are so carefully done it's just so thoughtful can i see that presentation too <laughs> yeah well i'm i'm I, i'm really making work for myself here this is a problem <laughs> Okay, musicologists, did they did they do the opening like da 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 da, da? like was that part of it in there or did I in make this that up track? In my head? No, uh, that particular track on the album is done by Will Roger and it's very very good and expanded. If you've not heard this whole album, Annie, like you need to do some listening. I don't, I don't know anything, Ryan. Don't <laughs> guess assume that OC. I am aware of things. Yeah, okay. yes, I will. I will, will DM you a link to this whole like ball yeah, this album, is great uh immediately as soon as we're done That's great but no the, the rising chordal stuff is not in i don't think this track yeah uh, yeah that's that's what i meant it's also interesting yeah. that it's not the opera story it's west side story <laughs> i noticed story. the part about the family is keeping them apart yeah well, okay so <laughs> my question is this you ready we don't know how the opera is supposed to resolve i think it's absolutely Ooh. plausible that everybody dies I mean, opera does that. <laughs> opera, opera be like that sometimes. It, it, does <laughs> it do be like that. Like that. <laughs> it would be a pretty That's standard it. issue if literally everyone on stage died except for the chorus, who then sang, "Oh no, they're dead," and that part always got cut because it's so stupid. One right. of my best friends is an yeah. opera singer, and she once came into a class I was teaching. Um, it was like a high school music history class, and she sang for them. Um, an aria from um the masked ball mm. and she was explaining the plot line of like well okay so i'm married to the baritone but i'm in love with the tenor but i don't want to be in love with the tenor because i don't want to cheat on my husband and then i get a potion right and then to not be in love but then my husband sees me collecting the stuff for the potion and then he's like well i'm gonna kill you <laughs> because you're unfaithful <laughs> even though she hasn't done that yet um, and, and so she's this, this aria is me going, oh yes, but let me see my son one last time before you kill me. Instead of being like, whoa, slow your roll. Like I didn't cheat on you, dick. Like, <laughs> and so all of the high schoolers were like, uh, do they have couples counseling? And she's like, that's not opera. <laughs> no, like, no, they, yeah. I'm trying no, of to course think of they a don't. healthy romantic relationship in opera. There must be like one. They're usually going to be like people who aren't featured in any way, right? Like, yeah, I was going to say marriages. Like, yeah, yeah. If there's they healthy just, relationship, it's just not the leads, right? right. Or you yeah. could get a comedy ending in a wedding where you just don't know where it goes after that. I mean, like arguably, Figaro and Susanna do okay. They have their shitty moments. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. That's yeah. great. If I if I had to put a couple in the running, it would probably be them. Yeah. So in any good. case, it Lulu is after and, midnight, any, and I teach yeah, we are. Everybody. Yeah, okay. we are going late, and my my baby woke up, so I gotta go pick her up. Oh no! So. Oh snap! Yeah, I hear her. I hear her. she's like really working herself into a tizzy up there. So I better go see what's going on. <laughs> All right. We're gonna cut the stream, thing, everybody. We'll see. We'll be back next week with something for Nacklicum. Bye, everybody, and thank you, thank Annie, you so, much so much for, for having us. me. You're the best. I it was, was so good to delighted. have you. Thank you for letting me rant about opera. Bye, everybody. Bye.